Hey guys, it's been a while since I produced a video for Super Simple Skybox. So I wanted to spend some time reviewing the different features in Super Simple Skybox and making sure that you all know how to use it as well as the different features that it has available to it. In the current version of the asset, when you download it, it'll import to your packages folder into the Super Simple Skybox folder within that. <laughs> There's a demo scene included in the samples folder. So you can go ahead and open that up by going to your samples, demo, levels, and then opening that demo level. That's what we have shown here. When you hit play, you'll see that the demo scene automatically you know, starts playing normally. Nothing weird there. To change the material that's used for the skybox in the demo scene, you'll go to the demo materials and then select the super simple skybox material. You can see that there are a ton of different options available in the super simple skybox material. At a high level, these different sections are broken down into different groupings. So we have the common settings, the ground settings, sky settings, sun settings, moon, star, cloud settings, and these different texture, look, and color settings are related to the cloud settings. So at a high level, we have common, ground, sky, sun, moon, star, and cloud options. Those options relate just to the Skybox material, but Super Simple Skybox also comes with other features. Like for example, you can, uh, it includes a sun script. So you'll add this to your main directional light. It'll automatically move the sun throughout the course of gameplay. So. In that way, you'll have an automatic time of day system that moves procedurally, and the sky will automatically adjust its color based on the position of the sun in the sky. So it is a procedural skybox. It will also automatically adjust the intensity of the light. You can see here that the sunlight intensity is constantly changing as it moves through the sky. In this case, it's constantly increasing because the sun's moving up. You can see since we started the video, the sun's moving up Quite a bit. Over here, it's just going behind the clouds now, but that's the moon. The moon also moves and also has its rotation change over time and has its maximum intensity change over time or its current intensity change over time. And then you'll also notice that on the sun, we had a set star rotation. So this automatically moves the position of the star sphere that is in the skybox material over time and then finally the uh, altos also uh, sorry super simple skybox also automatically does sunrise and sunset callbacks so when the sun rises or sets it'll do a callback i'll just show the demo for that really quickly We'll just open Visual Studio. Then I'll close everything except for this one. So to access these callbacks, it's really easy. You can, in your on enable, just find an object of type sun. So that sun type is the sun component that you've added to your main directional light. And then you can subscribe to the onrise and onset callbacks from that type. Um, and then you can create different methods like sunrise and sunset and trigger different events based on those events occurring. Always make sure to also unsubscribe from actions that you subscribe to. So that's sort of a high level view of the different components that's included. Now we'll take some time to go through the different features and settings of the material itself. So the first main thing that you should understand relates to the common settings. So you can see here that there are two color modes, day and night colors and constant colors. You can see that when I change from day and night colors to constant colors, this section disappears. So now it just says colors here, and you only have one set of color options. This also occurs for the cloud settings all the way down here. 
This makes it easier if you want to set the sky colors procedurally via script yourself. But by default, we choose to use day and night colors since this makes it really easy for the sky to dynamically change its color over time. In this case, uh, we have you know, a nice blue color for the sky during the day and a nice purple color for the sky at night. We also have some ground options. In here, we can disable the ground altogether. And then if we jump out of that view and look around, you can see that the clouds are wrapped around the entire sphere. So this looks really nice if you're making a game set high up where you want clouds to sort of wrap around the entire scene. When you enable it, it makes this ground layer here and you can customize the color of that ground layer. You can customize the height. You can make it go way high up as well. If you wanna make it feel like you're down in a pit and you can control the fade amount. So that's for the ground settings. Now we'll take a look at the different sky settings. You can see that the first option here is a horizon sky blend. So this affects how the horizon color and the sky color blend into one another. Let me go ahead and disable the clouds so you can see it more clearly. And I'll also disable the stars as well. So now we just have the sky and you can see that as I change this closer to zero, you can see that the sky color, which is this one, takes up more of the sky. And then as I bring it closer to, you know, something higher up like two, that that sky color takes up less of the sky. This gives you a lot of control over how you want the gradient to look for your sky. There's also a horizon. So that this basically works the same way for day and night colors. As the sun goes below the horizon, you'll see that the night colors transition in. You also have the horizon. So in the real world, the horizon is less saturated than the color of the sky directly above or towards the, you know, not directly towards the horizon. And so we simulate that effect here as well using the horizon saturation option. So if we bring this all the way down, you can see that the saturation at the horizon is brought all the way down to zero. You can also control the fall off. So bringing the fall off down makes the horizon saturation stretch higher up into the sky. And bringing it higher up makes it pinch really tight right exactly at the horizon step. So those are our sky settings. Then we also have sun settings. So here's our sun over here you can control whether or not it's enabled or disabled at all. This just affects whether we paint the sky with the sun disk, but it doesn't affect whether the sky actually, you know, whether the sun actually exists or not. So that would be in your sun component. Now the angular diameter in the real world for the sun is 0.52. Obviously that's quite small. It is quite realistic, but I think that in games it looks a little nicer to bring that up. And so you'll see in demo scenes, for example, I have this set to two. The sky, the sun also has different colors based on whether it is at the horizon or at the zenith. The zenith is directly above. So the horizon color is used when the sun is at the horizon and the zenith color is used when it's right above. And so what I usually like to do is I usually like to give it more of a reddish color when it's at the horizon. Um, this is all configurable, more of a reddish color when it's at the horizon so that it simulates more of a sunset type look. Another option that you have is the sky lighting. So sky lighting is whether or not the sun disk will project um, basically project light into the atmosphere around where the light is coming from. And so you can see when we have that enabled, it looks like the sun is illuminating the sky in the region near the sun disk itself. You can control the fall off amount, so you can make it really tight, or you can bring it really low and have it affect a large radius around the sun. You can also control the intensity of that effect. If you just want something really subtle, that's totally possible. Or you can make it really super bright for a really stylized effect. 
Now we also have a section specifically dedicated to sunsets. So for the sunset, we dynamically create a set of different gradients, a radial gradient, a horizontal gradient, and a vertical gradient. And we combine these gradients together to make really dramatic looking sunsets for a super simple skybox. So you can control the overall intensity of the, the sunset effect of those combined gradients. And you can control the individual fall off of the radial gradient, the horizontal, and the vertical gradient. So I'm going to go ahead and nudge this in the right direction here. And you can see as we get down towards the horizon, right here, you start to see that sunset kick into effect. And you can see that the sun also changed colors, like I mentioned. And down there in the bottom left corner, you can see our sunset and sunrise events being triggered. So let's go ahead and tell it to stop rotating while we take a look at these different sunset options. So you can see that there's this really long tail horizontal gradient, sort of a circular gradient going on as well, um, and a vertical gradient happening. And so if we jump back into our material, we can control the strength of these different gradients. So you can see here we can control this radial gradient really blow it up so that it completely takes over the entire sky. Our horizontal gradient. And our vertical gradient. And so these options allow you to make really unique looking, really remarkable sunsets in your game. And other games won't have this capability since they'll just be using a skybox texture pack or a you know dynamic sky that doesn't really treat sunsets in a particularly different way. But as you know and as I know, sunsets do look really different and really distinctive, and it's important that we really nail the look for sunsets. Now the next thing that we're gonna look at is the moon, if I can find it here. Let's see. So it's just up here. Great. We're just going to lock that one in place as well. And then we're going to jump into the different moon settings. So you can enable or disable drawing the moon disk. If you look carefully, you can see that there's a dark edge around the moon disk. This is due to a special algorithm that we implemented called limb darkening. This algorithm simulates the way that um, real objects in space, like the moon or like the sun, emit less light uh, when you're looking sort of along the curvature or the edge of that object. And so in the real world, you'll see this effect as well. And so it's really great to have that effect simulated also in our simple skybox. You have the angular diameter option here. The angular diameter for the moon is actually right around 0.5 as well. But I think we can both agree that that's you know, way too small. And so I like to bring that up so you can really see the effect. Here you can really see that limb darkening. Let's go with an option around two. You can control the color. So if you want something, you know, very blue, black, any color you want, you can set it to that. And you can control the fall off amount for the light coming off around the moon as well. Okay, so that's the moon and the sun. Now we're gonna take a look at the different star options. So you can see when I toggled that on, um, a lot of stuff just happened. So there's actually two unique effects that are taking place at the same time, and you can enable or disable either one as you see fit. So I'm gonna disable them both, and then we'll introduce them one at a time. So the first one that I'll re-enable is a star texture. So this one is an actual texture map, looks like this and it tiles seamlessly. I included a bunch of different texture maps in the pack. 
and they do a great job at making the sky look really interesting and dynamic. Uh, you can tint the texture map and you can control the scale of it. So that gives you a lot of control about how you want the texture map to look in the sky. And you can also control how quickly it rotates. So if we bring this up to something like five, you can see that the texture map is rotating really quickly. That just looks great. So we're gonna bring this back down to something more reasonable like one, and uh, we'll leave that option there and then we'll disable that. So that's the star texture option. Now we're gonna take a quick look at the procedural star option. So this one dynamically creates the star texture using 3D noise textures. These are automatically included and automatically sampled from the material itself. But it gives a slightly crisper look and it also works better towards the horizon. You can also see that the stars, if you look closely, are sort of flickering and they're flickering more towards the horizon. So. These are all conscious decisions that we made in order to help the skybox seem more realistic. You can control the sharpness of the stars. This affects, if we bring this all the way down, you can really see the 3D texture um, kind of showing through. And if we bring this up a little bit more, you can start to see how that forms those stars. And then you can change the amount of stars. So if you want to have a ton of stars in the night sky, you can bring it up to something quite high. Or if you want to have quite a few stars, you'll need to bring the amount down and then also bring that sharpness up. So you'll see something like that. I designed this asset so that the default options of one and one look quite nice. Uh, so you typically shouldn't have to change it too much. Now, um, the stars also have some common options that affect both the procedural stars and the star texture. And you can see that you can enable both of those together for a really dynamic, multi-layered effect. Now, the first thing that I'll talk about is the saturation. You can see that you can bring the saturation value way up or way down. So just isolating on the texture right now, you can see that the star texture color really starts to come through more as we bring that saturation up. And then isolating on the procedural stars, you can see that they start to turn quite red. Um, that's because in the real world, the majority of stars are actually quite a reddish color, uh, but normally you wouldn't be oversaturating it quite so much. The other thing we'll look at is the horizon fall off. So bringing this up causes the stars to fall off, become less prevalent towards the horizon. I think it looks really nice when you can see the stars all the way down to the horizon. So I like to keep that quite low. And then the daytime brightness affects how bright the stars are during the day. So you can see by default, they're actually quite dark during the day. Um, I think turning them off completely Looks okay, but not the best. You can see here that you can kind of just barely see them. And that's because the sun is just about going down below the horizon. And so we're starting to turn the stars on here. And then you can also control the default brightness setting at night. Okay, so that's the stars. I'm gonna go ahead and disable that whole section for now while we take a look at the clouds. Now, the clouds are made up of basically three major sections, the texture settings, the look settings, and the color settings. The texture settings consist of basically one texture. We resample that texture multiple times. You can set the scale of the texture and the speed at which that texture moves. Moving upwards means that it moves you know, from the horizon towards the center of the sky. You can see some pinching here. Um, that pinching we'll get into a little bit later. And the scale is something that you can control as well. I recommend using whole numbers for the scale. Awesome. 
and you can control these look settings. So the look settings basically describe, okay, so we have this start, this cloud texture, what do we do with it? So the look settings tell you what we're doing with the cloud texture. So you can change the cloudiness of the sky, going from completely overcast to completely sunny. You can change the opacity of the clouds so that they're more see-through. So it's different from cloudiness, right? The cloudiness lets us fade out the clouds. Oops. Fade the clouds out realistically. The opacity just makes them more see-through. The sharpness, you can see as we bring that down, the interior part of the cloud shape becomes less dense. So sharpness lets us increase the density towards the center of our cloud shapes. The shading intensity, you can see that we, when it's fully enabled, you can see that the inside part of these clouds has a bit of darker shading to it. And when it's disabled, the inside part is completely the same color as the rest of it. And so this shading intensity helps add depth and texture to the cloud shapes. The next option, the Zenith falloff, lets you avoid this exact pulling issue that I'm demonstrating here. So this is a result of how we generate the UVs that we use for sampling the clouds. So when we get rid of that, we can see that the clouds don't necessarily go directly overhead, but they're within you know a 10% region of directly overhead and overall the clouds elsewhere look really nice. Uh, this next session, section controls how we resample the clouds so you can just use uh, one iteration. Um, so the iteration is like basically we take this texture and then we sample it again in order to add more depth and detail to the cloud shape. So if we resample it again and then increase the intensity of that resampling, you can see how the cloud shape changes a little bit. This gives you more control over the final look of the cloud shape. And you can have as many as four different iterations. Just be aware that this does have a performance cost. And then finally, you can set the color of the clouds to you know, anything you want, truly. And so this gives you a lot of control over what you want the actual cloud shape to look like and gives you a lot of stylized control as well. And then the clouds also have a different color for the nighttime. Okay, so that was a complete walkthrough of the current state of the super simple Skybox asset. We also have documentation available online on our doc site that give some more context or usage examples for super simple skybox. So to access that, you'll go to docs.okasoftware.com and then navigate to super simple skybox where we have some more information about how the skybox works. Okay. Uh, if you're interested in buying the skybox, you can go to the uh, you can go to our website, okasoftware.com, and then navigate to um, our publisher page on the Unity Asset Portal, and then look for Super Simple Skybox. Okay, uh, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below.